guys, welcome to a new episode of Creative in Focus. And right now, we are in a very great studio. We've been in this studio before, but this is just a different set or different scenario. And this looks like a freaking, uh, you know, the psychiatrist set up where the, the doctor will be there and then the patient will be here. So, then they ask so you, I'm the doctor now. I think so though. <laughs> so, I mean, from the voice, you can know who's this. But if you're watching this from YouTube, you already know who's this handsome fella next to me. Uh, you know, before you know, rather than me introducing who's in this podcast, uh, let the guest introduce himself. So, guest. All right. Uh, uh, my name is Zach. I'm a travel filmmaker, mm-hmm. and this is Dome Studio. Yep. All uh, right. In episode twelve, Z- uh, Kao was here doing the interview with you also. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was supposed to be here, but yeah, he was yeah. <laughs> very, very busy, 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 busy guy as <laughs> well. <laughs> All right. So, um, you have any clue what we are going to be talking about for today's podcast? Uh, I think you briefed me a bit. Talk about travel filmmaking. Yep, that's that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. So um, I know. Uh, okay. So for the people who's watching this or hearing this, right? Um, Zach is actually a travel videographer. Yeah. Or, uh, what we call travel videographer or filmmaker? I like filmmaker more. <laughs> more atas lah. Yeah, because videographer means like it's it sounds like just the guy who do the camera work, but uh, we, we do more than that. Like the planning, the the shooting, the production, everything. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So he's one like. Three in one package, lah. Yeah, more, yeah, three, four, five in one. I don't know. Okay, okay. So Zach is actually a travel filmmaker. He's worked yeah. with a, a lot of international brands and as well as a lot of influencers. Yep. So do you want to name any influencers that you work with? Um, or brands or something. Quite a lot, like uh, a lot, man. <laughs> for 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 travel, uh, we work with Asia. We work with um tourism board, like mm-hmm. uh, the Korean tourism, mm-hmm. the Australian tourism, um, airlines and uh, um, travel agencies. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yep. So, uh, if you guys are listening, you know the it's gonna be a very good topic for today. So, because I want to take your <laughs> input on this, but before that, right? Like you say that you work with like Asia, this yes. and that. Like, so how long you been doing this, man? You mean the whole travel thing? The whole. I mean your career as well. Um, I I'm in the in the production industry for about seven years now. Seven years. Because, wow. Yes, mainly I skip college. That's why I I have. Right, long... right, guys. You yeah. know, film making is not. <laughs> You cannot discover that in college, guys. Yeah, it's it's not you cannot. It's more like um, uh, I was I was baller enough to like you know mm-hmm. w- when I was graduate from high school like yeah. about eighteen years old. I just like fuck this shit. I'm, can, can I say fuck? Yeah, yeah dude. This <laughs> is a, this is an explicit podcast, oh, so you can okay. say yeah. all the vulgar words okay, out okay. there. Okay, so, okay. Okay, I say fuck this shit. I, I'm yeah. not going. I'm no, not gonna go in college. I say um, at least you know m- give me a two two years break. I'm gonna just discover myself. I make a deal with my parents, things like that, and then uh, that work. Yeah, 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 two years, two years. Initially, I have to, I have to show something in two years. Wow, two years. Yeah. Uh, usually they say one year. Give me one year. Why? Uh, why? Why two years? Because I know one year is not gonna happen. Okay. It's, it's not gonna. It's <laughs> not enough for me. Okay. Yeah, realistic yeah, yeah, yeah. enough. So, okay. So so the first year I spent, but the first year basically working, you know, all kind of jobs. Like I was a promoter and shits. So and then I save all my money. I, I got my own set of camera, and then uh, that's the time when I uh, start to learn about filmmaking, and then I go into to 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 work as like PA and all kind of different kind of works in in some kind of local productions. Mm-hmm. That was about uh, end of eighteen nine uh, like nineteen years old. Mm, okay. So all the way to today, I'm like twenty five now. Wow. Yeah. So, so that means you work with like the bigger production houses, lah. I mean, big production house was a very small job for me. <laughs> I was like a production assistant. Basically, okay. it's the guy who, you know... Uh, yeah, take the coffee. Take I mean, the coffee, I, the, the rubbish. The, yeah. No harm in that. I've done that before. I've been a <laughs> PA's PA, man. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah right. Like, that. Okay. <laughs> like, I need to help the PA, man. Oh, wow. To, okay, mostly because I was a student and my lecturer introduced me to that. Uh, uh, because I told him that I wanted to, you know, go see the production world. Yeah. So he told me he knows a PA. Can you be the PA's PA? I'm like, wow. fuck, what am I supposed to do I for the PA? I thing exists. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't exist. It, it was just free coolie lah. Okay, okay, atas okay. Word okay. Lah, be yeah, yeah. PA's PA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see, I see. see. Alright, so um, topic for today, right? Um, yep. Since you're a travel fleet maker. Yep. And, you know, the if, you, if you've been living under a freaking rock, um, there's, a, there's been a pandemic, a worldwide pandemic yeah. that has caused uh, millions for every country yeah. around the world. So, Especially for the travel industry as well. Yeah, so how it, badly has it affected you for in terms of your business? Uh, very bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> very bad. Because um, you know Malaysia started MCO about March. Yeah. All right. But Quite late uh, lah. our impact it's earlier than March because mm-hmm. our international clients. Yeah. So um, our first first project it got hit was uh, in February. Mm-hmm. So it was in uh, it was supposed I was supposed to be in Hong Kong. 
school Oof. but you know it got cancelled like yeah. end of January they said oh no 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 don't come here like China was bad that time yeah 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 and then uh, then on, on March uh, we introduced MCO and then that's where we lost another one uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a local brand but uh, they say they will they will cancel their marketing because they have no product to sell mainly because their it's product all related to manu- traveling ma- manufacture in China wow so China <laughs> shut down so they have no product to sell shit. so they can't do any shit so uh, that's, that's that's the second thing so we we feel the hit way before the MCO mm. and then when MCO came it just got worse la. so that's literally we can't do any shooting mm. like there's nothing going on for three months okay yeah so uh, from your perspective right. Yeah. I know this thing is not gonna last for like freaking forever unless mm-hmm. you know hopefully. some hopefully where's the wood man okay touch wood <laughs> touch right wood. <laughs> touch wood <laughs> so okay it's touch wood nothing bad happens right yeah what do you see the future of travel travel filmmaking or travel jobs mm-hmm. because um this this not this is not like a normal crisis like yep. before like financial crisis yes this is a health crisis yes so what where do you see the future of travel filmmaking um for now i to think that for international travel, mm-hmm. up to um, at least the end of 2021, it's not going to happen. Uh, at the end of 2021? End of 2021. Wow. The, 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 the another one, at least, I was saying, I'm saying, okay. at least for another one year, it won't have uh, international travel. And even they resume, um, it's very unlikely for them to promote mm. uh, because people will know, like, uh, you, you have a cool down period. Even today, I introduce the vaccine. People still need time to buy the idea. So, but don't you think yeah. like you know the airline companies? Yes, they'll they'll be the first one to or not not just airline like those who will actually uh, focus on traveling. They need yeah. traveling or people to travel to make yeah. business. Don't you think those kind of companies will actually be the one that go aggressive on this? If let's say the vaccine is discovered, uh, there will. But um, like I say they will probably be very, very careful on, on, on what they are doing. Because yep. uh, first, of all, first of all, no, I, I mean like where they are going to spend the money. Okay, that's so, true. So um, for instance, right now we, we know that um, airlines mm-hmm. uh, suffer on cash flows. Yeah, I do. Uh, Malaysian Airlines, like the yeah. mass, right? Yeah. I heard they're going bankruptcy and they're not getting any support from government already. Uh, yeah, there's some inside news. Lah. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So they, they need cash. Um, they will be very, very careful on where they're gonna spend the money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so I would say, for another year, first of all, international travel is not gonna happen, mm-hmm. and the second of all is, uh, even if it does happen, it's very unlikely for the brand to put in the same budget as usual, mm-hmm. like uh, one year ago to 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 promote one, travel. Yeah, uh, one project yeah. fifteen million. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, very unlikely. Yeah. yeah. Alright, so I know, I know uh, guys, you've been listening to this. I know we've been a bit negative on this. Yeah, so but negative. I know, right? But you know, let's, let's kick it out a bit. Like, let's make it a bit positive. Okay, okay, Come okay, on, okay. Zach, okay? Yeah. So, um, if, if let's say, yeah. um, I believe that you've been not doing a lot of travel filmmaking, uh, mm-hmm. especially internationally, but mm-hmm. locally you've been doing it, but not mm-hmm. recently like, because, you know, yeah. second lockdown has been announced. Yep. <laughs> so, but what do you have to say for all the travel filmmakers out there? Do you mean regarding the regarding about this like, like let's say because just now we're talking about negativity right yeah so what can they do to survive this uh, from your own perspective what have you done as well no for me mm-hmm. that uh we have to adapt like, like let's say like right after the mco like mm-hmm. about yep. may june yep uh we shift our focus from uh, travel to mm-hmm. to obviously um, to a different niche to, to the different niche yep. like, so let's say um we do some um, some kind of ads like commercials, corporate mm-hmm. corporate videos kind of work. Yeah, it's uh it's still it's still filmmaking. It's just that uh, it's more traditional. I would say yeah yeah the <laughs> traditional way of doing it. Before that we were doing this also, but it was like thirty percent of our our work. Yeah, it wasn't was, the main income source. Yeah, right? the main income was still yeah. travel. Okay, and, and right now we have to expand that little thirty percent into the hundred percent. Mm. And um, yeah, I think. For the skill wise, it's, it's actually kind of the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still can apply your, your filmmaking skill into different niche. Mm-hmm. So I, I think this is the time to experiment it because, I mean, for honestly, we really just cannot do travel now. That's true. Yeah. I think I think the key word that got from Zach is to, to adapt to the situation. Yep. Yeah, that. because not, not all filmmakers will... 
actually be this because I've seen someone they yeah. actually kind of give up not give up oh. but they have no choice because of okay. the you know okay. income yeah. and everything they need to support either their family or maybe they have a lot of com- commitments lah mm-hmm. so um it's no nothing wrong with like getting a full time job like yeah. to be honest I almost got a full time job oh okay yeah that okay here's a story lah yeah. I actually uh after the first MCO. Uh-huh. Um, after that, after two months, you know, uh-huh. job was very hard for me to get. Yes. And a lot of people, you know, either they lower the budget or they actually cancel because they cannot pay themselves because yep. they have no income source. Yes. So I was okay. This is what my mom told me that get a job. What what's what's the hard in that? Like get a job. And here's the thing that happens to me. Like I actually applied for a job okay. in Job Street. Okay. Oh. I updated my resume after five years. <laughs> okay, so I I legit don't know. Okay, the whole five years I don't know what to put. Okay, where where was I working? Yeah. I cannot takal. I put oh I working in my own company. Yeah, it, it's not very good to put in resume mm-hmm. lah. But the thing is right when I apply and I even went for interview, mm. I actually say that hey, you know what I'm not looking for this. Uh, I don't want this job. Oh yeah, so on I, the interview. Okay. Uh, no lah. Just straight away tell oh, them okay, lah. Okay, like, okay. uh, talk to do talk a little bit. Then okay, okay, okay. Interview. Then they say when you like to get started. I'm mm. like, uh, then I just realized. Uh, then I told them, uh, I like to apologize, but I don't mm. think I can get started here lah because mm. I, I tip a bit lah. I feel like yeah. I told them like, uh, this company. Uh, I feel like it's not a great place for me to work okay. at. But thank you for your time. Oh, then I chow already. Uh, <laughs> but in real life, I really didn't want to have a job because the pro. The thing is right. Like I told this to my mom and my mom uh. like. Like tell me, go go. Of course. <laughs> yeah, like, like why didn't you? I mean, you had the opportunity. Getting mm. having a job is like a freaking blessing, lah, for me. I mm. mean, at the, at this time, but I realized, right, I'm not built for that. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. Like, okay, I ask you, would you be going back to a job? Uh, not even related to filmmaking. No. Any job, barista. No. Uh, why? Uh, I tried. Okay. Uh, like like I say, when I started, uh, I was working different kind of yep, yep. job. I was one of the one of it was like office work. Yep. Like nine <laughs> to five. Office, yes. Yeah, I yeah, really cannot, work. man. So I I tried that for some time. Mm-hmm. That was the last time I ever worked a nine to five. Yes. Because I hate it so much. Yes. And I just cannot do it. Yes. I, I'm self aware that I cannot do it. Yes. I cannot perform well. Yes. And I'm not happy. Mm-hmm. So. It's a loss from me, as uh, for me also for the company. Yeah. Like they hire someone who are not performing well, and I'm not happy. So yeah. it's a lose lose situation. It's I'm not, not a, just it's not even a win lose situation. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's also a lose lose. It's a lose lose situation. Uh, I'm I feel way happier and and I can do way better when I started my own thing, mm. and that also when uh, I mean I I took some personality test that that's yep that's also the result uh, that yeah. I have to. I have to do what I do now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's the point, lah. Because I yeah. told my mom that I've actually tasted. Okay, I don't want. Well, I don't want to put the name entrepreneurship because mm-hmm. I feel like that's overrated. Yeah, yeah. But I, I felt, not felt. Okay, I've been through that mm-hmm. place where I know that I know how to find a client. I know how mm-hmm. to get a job for mm-hmm. myself, and I know how to, uh, get sales in mm-hmm. and out, lah. It's mm-hmm. just, I, I, I was telling myself. Is is that is it because of the pandemic I'm not getting a job, mm-hmm. or is it because I'm not giving my hundred mm-hmm. percent? I actually sat down in the car. I was thinking about this. I feel like that thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like most people who take the job, right? Yeah. I always tell them there's two things. Are you taking a job because one, really the pandemic has been affected you that mm. you really cannot get a job, mm. or two, you didn't give hundred percent. Which yeah. one is it? Then I, I th- my answer was I didn't give hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Like some days I will you know do the sales call I email people some days I don't I just mm-hmm. sleep in the house then I do work like mm-hmm. in the matter so I'm not even giving hundred percent I'm giving just barely giving twenty percent so I told my mom that then my mom say like don't think too much lah you know yeah. Asian people don't think yeah. too much go for the safer route but I really told her I will never get a job okay because I know that. I only I will, if if let's say I get a job worst case scenario lah. Yeah. I really need the money. Okay, I think that that that's the worst case scenario. If I really need the money, I will uh-huh. do all it takes to get the money, man. Yep, that's because we are living in an era such an interesting era that yeah. you can just do so much just from your laptop as well. Yeah, I mean I I. Uh, 
Okay, as actually a bit lah. It's more like you can close the fifty k job half naked on the bed with your phone. You get what I mean? Yeah, with the girl yeah, next we're to living, it. We're <laughs> living in this era right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, like, 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 yeah. It's possible. It's possible. Yeah, yeah. Back then, it's, it wasn't possible, but yeah, it's possible now. And, and yeah. that's the thing lah. Like, okay, uh, coming back to the first answer, I want to tell you this that yeah. filmmakers, you know, don't give up. If let's say you want to get a job, get a job, but. Before you get a job, right? Ask these two questions first. Like, are you giving your hundred percent? Mm. Is that, uh, I mean, sorry, if is it the pandemic has been affected you really, really bad that mm. you really cannot get a job? Is that why you're getting a job, or you're not even giving hundred mm-hmm. percent? If that second question say that no, mm-hmm. then I think you need to reassess what you're doing, lor. Yes, it's not exactly. that job is okay. It's not a bad thing getting a job, lah. I mean, it's a money, money, lah. Yeah. But just ask this question, lah, if you really want it, and as well adapt to situation. If let's say Zach is a travel filmmaker, and if if you haven't adapted mm. to whatever niche you're doing right now, right? Yeah. I don't think you'll be having this studio in your hand, man. <laughs> I don't yep. think you'll be paying these bills, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're a business owner. Like most people don't understand this. Running a company is not cheap. Yes. That's why we we actually price a lot. Like I I know you've been going through that struggle of paying the bills every month, right? Yeah, yeah. We have to. <laughs> no matter how, you have yeah. to pay the bills. It's a good thing, right? He's not losing hair, people. <laughs> Uh, maybe I might. That's why I curl my hair. It looks more now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen many of my friends like losing hair, bro. Really? Yeah, like bro, stress killer, bro. <laughs> oh my god, no, no, it's okay. I, I'm always, I'm most optimistic about things. Like, uh, like I say, I, I believe that we live in such a great era that, uh, that so many things can happen. So many things is possible now. Yep. Only possible now. Yep. Yeah. Not thirty years ago, but now. Yeah. Having a positive attitude, guys. That's yeah. how you overcome the pandemic. Yeah. All right. So. If let's say yes. okay, move to the second question. Okay. If let's say travel has resumed, everything is back. Yep. The freaking coronavirus has been dead for fifteen oh. thousand years. I'm okay, happy. just exaggerating. Yep. yep. If what what is your take for the filmmakers? Yeah. Or uh, let's say lah, not the professional one. Let's say the amateurs or mm. the medium level. Okay. What is your, what is the important things to do when mm. you're doing travel filmmaking? What are the key things that they need to take care of? Uh, take care of yep. yeah. when shooting lah. Uh, f- your physical strength. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's was, right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Moving to different different uh equators. Yes, because um, will take a toll on you. The biggest things I learned from uh travel filmmaking mm. is that um, it's often not just like you know when in traditional sets we we just like we, maybe we just we are in a closed environment we we've been there the whole day just to shoot something. Or, or even like for event, we just shoot for that that half a day. Mm-hmm. But for travel filmmaking, is uh, really you want to push your body strength a lot, your limit. Um, for instance, you need to do a lot of hiking. Uh, you need to you know to get that shot. You need to physically um, be there. Output a lot Oof. of your thing. Yeah, yeah. And your gears. Yep. Ter- th- that is why we want. Yep. Uh, like the gear. There's a reason for it. It's yep. not just the air airplane travel things. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's more like carrying in those stuff yep. and going to the location. <laughs> yes. And so the first thing we want to take care it's a uh, physical strength. Mm-hmm. I would say really it. This is one of the things. So the second thing is more like uh, you know um, the ability to adapt into very d- like different kind of situations. Yeah. Example. Weather's and let's say you are in locations mm-hmm. and then there is like some rain going on. What do you do? Mm. Yeah, it's not just your physically adapted it's more like the mentally and, and what kind of idea can come out of. Mm. because you know that um, the client paid all the thing that you're on the locations let's say you are on a very nice um, nice uh, lake or something like that and it rains like what do you do? Mm. And, so what do you because do? There's, no, <laughs> there's, there's no coming back Be- only one day people fly you all the way to for instance okay. people fly you to Korea Okay. You hike up the snow mountain. Mm-hmm. That's a snowstorm. Like, what do you do? <laughs> do you just like okay, we don't shoot this. Okay. But pe- client pay for that. You have to shoot something. Okay. And you get to make it nice. Okay. How? For the sake of yeah. people listening, right? Because yeah. this was actually catered to amateurs or actually uh-huh. start like medium level, lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's put it. They haven't even traveled outside Malaysia. Okay, okay. So they haven't experienced snowstorm. <laughs> even myself, I haven't experienced snowstorm. <laughs> okay. So have you experienced snowstorm before? Uh, snow. No, let me think. Or snow. No. <laughs> yeah, snow. Yes, but I don't think snowstorm. No, no, I okay. don't think I. So I from your pu- yeah. from your pura, what would you do if let's say that happened? So if let's say you are high up to the top of the mountain, then there's a snowstorm hitting. Yep. Like what do you do? You still gonna film something? So first of all, you're gonna talk to. You're gonna to talk to the client. Yep. Uh, most likely, the client will be with you. 
sometimes they will not the, not the client la, like just the middle person la. yeah 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 yep. it's just so- someone who you know the guide mm. and said okay we're gonna do something or we, we're gonna do something the weather uh, the weather cannot allow us to do what we are scripted yep. so we're gonna do something else okay. so inform them and then second of all you're gonna talk to your talent because most of the time you're gonna bring a model or an like actor yep. you can talk to the talent okay we're still going to shoot Okay, we have no choice. Are you okay with it? Okay, that means you just yeah. change a little bit of the storyline, lah. Uh, we have to adapt, lah. We have to, we have to think about uh, what okay. kind of what kind of visual can we take? Okay. And then uh, we just we just we just take. Okay. You know what I mean, yeah. Is that all? Uh, and then and then the rest is how do you like technical part? Lah. How do you shoot in the sort of How do you find the angle okay. with the tree? Yeah. I mean, okay. Actors. Speaking about that, right? I have a question for you. Yeah. You know, usually, okay, for normal pre-production, right, yeah. we actually go scouting for location, yeah. look at around, and then we actually do some lighting tests, okay, what light, what scenario would be nicer for this, mm-hmm. and then we prep, okay, we see, make sure everything, we got clearance or not. Yeah. So for travel film making, right, mm. like you, you actually go there one month earlier, you go yeah. scouting again, you come back, and then you go back. Yeah, no. If the client very good, uh, they, will, they will pay you like that, but no. how do you no. prep, if let's say you no. haven't been to that location, yeah. how do you prep all the shots you needed? Or um, do you even prep a shot? Do you just go there and chin chai shoot? We will have a we have a rough rough script. It's like documentary. You yep. cannot script, yep, yep. you cannot script That's true. It because we don't know what happened there. But uh, we have Google. <laughs> we, have, we have Google Street View. Mm-hmm. We we kind of know kind of know the place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like how it gonna look like, and then uh, client will tell you, oh, this place. What's interesting here? Mm. Yeah, they will tell you like, oh, we need to make sure you 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 get this statue on the on the film. I say okay. Things like that, mm. and uh, and then we will need to talk about like uh, actually it's more on how how much time do we take from point A to point B mm. instead of how the point looks like because obviously uh, the there timing will, matters. There will like. be plenty of pictures online on that place because yep. the place where you used to shoot is uh, often like tourist spot and then people. The places that client want to promote to people, mm. so there will be some kind of images already for you to look at, but it's more like uh, uh, the the concern is more on moving logistics mm. from point A to point B to point C. How long does that just take? So basically, it's just like a normal travel planning, lah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's it's very much like pre- travel okay. planning. Okay, okay, yeah. cool, cool. All right. So, uh, is that all you want to give to the people who actually want to do travel filmmaking? Uh, any other points you want to give? Any other points? Uh, I think, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's kind of all. Yeah. All right, guys. Yeah. So, if you have more questions, uh, personal questions, you can ask him, Zach, yeah. in the comment section. Or, uh, where do you think they can find you? Um, Instagram. Instagram. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm more active on Instagram uh, daily. My st- I post daily. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay. Instagram is like my, my, my stories and shit. So you can just reply me, and or you can just find me on Facebook. Uh, YouTube, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah. so we haven't had the podcast yet. I got s- little few more questions. Yeah, sure. So last question, right? Yeah. I want to ask you, since we talk about equipment and everything, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, in the inf- in the information of people who's watching this, right? You actually use a camera called Lumix. Yeah. Oh, no, sorry, a brand called Lumix. Yes, Lumix. Yeah. Mm. So I want to ask you a question. Okay. Uh, don't uh, you know people who's watching this, uh, listening to this, right? Don't like Marami. I haven't heard. Of a Lumix brand until I met this guy. Really? Dude, I'm, I'm serious. I'm yeah. serious. No, no, yeah, Lumix is. Uh, I know it's been a. It's been. In it's the a brand industry. under Panasonic. Yeah. So Panasonic Lumix. The, the yeah, but I haven't heard yeah. specifically uh, or even seen a camera called Lumix. So uh-huh. ever since I met you, I was like, uh-huh. oh, because in my in my head, right, I always thought okay. there's only Nikon, Canon, or Sony, uh, and probably Olympus lah. Yeah, but Olympus yeah. is just for photographers only. Uh, Lumix, yeah, Lumix is more. Uh, I would say they are really more focused on video. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, for 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 videographers. Mm-hmm. So here's a question. Yeah. Why Lumix though? Why not just follow? Why not just take the famous brands like Canon, uh-huh. uh, Nikon, Sony? Because uh, I believe yeah. that you use some of the brands before, right? Uh, I was a Canon user. Uh, yeah, you was a Canon user. Yeah. So what made you switch? From Canon to Lumix. Okay. Um, okay, we are going to a very sensitive. Oh, no? oh, let's okay. do this. Ah, so, uh, right, Canon the user start. or Sony user, just, just uh, <laughs> let's be rational here. Okay, this is my personal choice. Okay. okay. Um, so, I was a Canon user. Mm-hmm. So, one day, I just want to switch switch my system. Okay. Say, Why? Why though? I'm done with Canon. Uh, I like Canon lens. Yep. Canon lens are very good. Ca- I like Canon lens, especially the 7200. Okay. It's, it's very very legit lens, okay. and the camera is also very very legit. But one day that I, 
I was actually looking at Sony when I when I tried to change system mm -hmm. because of uh, first of all I think that Canon want to push their cinema great camera yeah. on DSLR great they're just really back then they just feels like they're not putting a lot of juice in it for instance uh, the 4K capability and and uh, the low light uh, Sony was doing very, very good job in S7S2, the era, as an s 2 or s 7 r 2 uh, s 7 2 that, that kind of era when I tried to switch. So um, I was looking at Sony. So the first camera that I actually want to change to is the s 7 III. Ah, yeah. okay. And then... Full uh, frame lah? Yes, full frame. Okay. Uh, uh, because I was using a 70D back then. So I want to jump to s 7 III. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it was out of stock. Okay. So, but I have to use another camera because I'm 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 having a job in China that I know that <laughs> my Canon will not yeah, sufficient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I need to have a new camera. Okay. So people are suggesting different different kind of you know same grid as as. And then uh, I look at Lumix GH Five, mm -hmm. which is surprisingly micro four third sensor. Yep. It's smaller than the FPS-C. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I was looking at that, and then I found out that. It's a very strong camera on video. So it can shoot 4K, it can shoot cinema 4K, it can shoot um, up to 400 Mbps on the bit rate, 10 bit colors. I think, uh, I think Lumi should be sponsoring this episode because we, <laughs> because we are actually giving you a good name, guys. Yeah, Lumix. Yeah, this, is, yeah, this is not sponsored by Lumix, but this is my, my, my personal, personal thoughts. Lah. So, mm. And then I have actually, back then I was like, okay, looks good. And I look at the test footage. Okay, let's let's just buy that GH five. Mm -hmm. So actually, it's the same price as the Sony S seven three. Okay. So actually, just because of the 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 sensors are micro la, crop sensors. Yeah. So people would think like, what the hell? You spend you spend the same amount of money, you buy a micro third. Yeah. But it's it's not about the sensor, guys. It's mm -hmm. way more than that. So and then I bought GH five. I I used it in the project in China, and then the the thing come out. It just blown my mind because it's like, whoa, shit! My first time shooting four K and. 400 Mbps, like wow, and then uh, after a f uh, after a while, I bought a second GH5. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so I have two GH5, and then I just stick with the looming system because uh, I I feel like the video capability are really 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 mm. strong strong. Okay, yeah. so let's let me ask you this. Um, right now, okay, uh, as the time of this recording, right, uh, Sony just released their new uh Ace Seven S Three. No 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 no, it's something uh, I forgot the name, but Ace C. Yeah, yeah, A7C, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's basically a A6500 body yeah. with a full frame lens yeah. and with a, a flip out. Sensor. Yeah, sorry, yeah, flip, yeah. For full frame sensor yeah. and with a flip out screen. Mm -hmm. And it, it has the all capabilities of, mm -hmm. bet, I always say better than Lumix. Mm -hmm. So will that make you, I mean, GS5 compared yeah. to last time, yes, um, maybe that was your. Good yeah. option. But right now, you know, camera has been upgrading mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. So do you think you'll be upgrading to back to Sony? Uh, <laughs> no. Why? Uh, so S seven S uh, S seven C came out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but at the same time, Lumix came out. Uh, Lumix S five. Okay. Okay. Full frame is, is it? Which is the smallest full frame they ever made. Okay. And it's smallest full frame. What do yep. you mean, like the, the smallest, smallest body? Body. Oh, okay. Is, is, it, is it like actually, similar to the one Sony? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. So uh, the Lumix S five is actually even lighter than the GH5. Ah, oh, okay. It's a full frame. Okay, okay. Like I used it uh, last week. Uh -huh. uh, so Lumix sponsored me on the... Okay, Lumix! <laughs> All right, if you guys... No, are... that, was, that was my video. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, so they, they sponsored me on making that video to uh, to showcase the, the new S5. Yep. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, you can buy it now. Um, so it's almost the same price range as the S7C. Yeah, so that is a competitor mm. of the S7C. Yeah. Yeah, so either that you'll be moving up for Lumix anytime soon. No. Uh <laughs> yeah. Uh, also the color science for it's for me is one of the concerns la. Yeah, the 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 the, the lock file, everything, I just this is a personal take. I like it more on Lumix on the color. All right, guys. So yeah. you listen to um Zach's about opinions on you know cameras and mm. Lumix. Um uh, Disclaimer, this is not a sponsored yep. ad for guys, it so not. it's up to your choices. Do yeah. some research. Yeah. But Lumix, you know, if you are uh, if you're looking for a sponsorship, you know, hit this boy up. Not this boy like me, guys. <laughs> yeah. Hit me this up boy. for this podcast, you know. Uh I would love to get sponsored by Lumix. I don't care. I, I love free products. <laughs> I have no okay, I cannot say this. But never mind. All right. <laughs>
So uh, Before we end this right Zach mm, Do you have any yeah. Inspirational words For all the filmmakers Out there Inspirational word uh. Especially uh, You know especially when uh-huh. For them to get through This pandemic Um. Okay Um. I want to share something from my mentor last sure. time. Sure. Okay, it's not like it's, it's not like mentor. Like it's like a very, very good friend, but elder, way elder than me. Mm-hmm. So um, he said something that um, uh, let me translate this from Mandarin. Uh, your pain is temporary, but the result is forever. So, for instance, why do I want to hike up all the way to the top of the mountain just for that one shot? All right. We will hesitate a lot before we hike outside. Is it really worth it just to go out there? We'll go there someday yeah. later. But no, we want to do it now. We get that shot. That pain, it's temporary. But the shot will last forever. So that's always my motto right now. That whenever I try to do something and then I'll say, uh, shit, do I really do, does it really worth it? And I will tell myself this. Yes, it is because you're going to, what? You're going to spend just a few hours pain to go through that. Then the result, it will just last forever. So that's, uh, that's, that's my sharing on, on this. Just, just do it. All right, yeah. all right. <laughs> yeah. You know, okay, I know some people will say, like, mm. wow, these two guys are being too positive. You know, look <laughs> at them having a studio, have the equipment, blah, 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 like, have the accessibility. Like, uh, for disclaimer, right, both yeah. of us, I don't think we started... Yeah. With a golden spoon lah. No, no. He didn't graduate not. from college. He didn't even went to college, yeah, guys. No, no, yeah. And I graduated uh from college without a job, certainty. <laughs> that's the that's the thing. <laughs> but I was even before I were like even during college, I was already start working ready because mm-hmm. I knew that experience matters rather than mm-hmm. being, having a freaking paper. Mm-hmm. So I took my I took my opportunity, I did a lot of work. Mm-hmm. We okay. We all did a lot of hard work. So, before you can criticize us, ah, it's all talking positive, blah, blah blah. But just ask yourself: This is our journey, and we've been through the rough yeah. thing, and we're still going through the rough thing. But we can always see the, the silver lining at the end of the day. Yes. So for you guys, if you're listening or watching this from YouTube, always remember that if you give up, it's super easy. But if you keep working hard and having a goal, you will eventually reach it, lah. But just Plan it properly. Don't just chinchai. Yeah. Oh, I, I want to have this Lamborghini. <laughs> How ah? Uh? Uh, you have no plan. So a person that doesn't plan is planning to fail. So yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's been inspirational for ending this podcast. So if you guys um you know enjoy this podcast, give it a like. Uh, we've been up in all platforms: Spotify, Apple Music, and as well. If you want to see our beautiful faces and the Dome Studio second set, you can check us out in YouTube uh, at the In Focus Network at the Creative In Focus Podcast. And yeah, this uh, this has been like a uh, season one is gonna end soon. Okay. So if you guys are interested for season two, uh, more things are coming up. More bigger people are coming up. Nice. So look out for more. And yeah, Zach, anything you wanna add up? Yeah. Thank you so much uh, for having me. And okay, do follow him in YouTube as well. Yeah, yeah. I have a YouTube channel. Just just Google my name, Zach Lee. And <laughs> then uh, yeah, subscribe to this channel, like and share to your friend. We will see you soon, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Always go out there, guys. Discover, connect, and inspire. And I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs>